We find something really beautiful commented upon by Muhammad al-Sha'arawi Al-Sha'ara, rahimahullah. Really beautiful. He says those four oaths are also particularly special for the tranquil self. The person who reaches this tranquility is a real servant of Allah, slave of Allah. And what are the most blessed acts of slavery to Allah? Number one, it's the Fajr prayer. Right? Abandoning your sleep. Then the slave of Allah takes most advantage of what times? The last 10 of Ramadan, the first 10 of the Hijjah, right? وَلَيَالِ Ashr. Then وَالشَّفْرِ وَالْوَتْرِ Which were the, the, the odd and the even nights of those times as it was interpreted. Some even interpreted it as the odd prayers and the even prayers. The even and the odd rather, right? And then when Layli Ida Yasrub, the night as it's about to disappear. When the night is about to disappear is the is the time to wrap up your Qiyam al Layl, right? Which is the, again the act of closeness to Allah Azza wa Jal, and also the time to finish your suhoor so you can what? Fast. So the the acts of closest worship to Allah Azza wa Jal are those times that are illustrated, or those, uh, what, what's alluded to in the opening oaths. And the one who was committed to those oaths, how is Allah addressing that person at the end? Ya ayyatuhan nafs al mutma'inna. Now what has satisfied this nafs? What has satisfied this nafs? Everybody else was running after stuff. What is the first and most important gift Allah gives this nafs? Irji'i ila rabbiki. Return to your master. Return to your master. That's the, that's the thing that was dissatisfying this nafs. That nothing else satisfied this person in their heart. This remembering Allah satisfied them. And now Allah gives them satisfaction beyond even remembering Allah. Return to Allah. In this there is a profound reality in the life of a Muslim who makes tawbah. Or in the life of anyone who accepts this deen. When you return to Allah Azza wa You face a lot of difficulty. Whether you are a Muslim who is in sin. And they decide they want to change their life and they want to become obedient to Allah. Or you are a non-Muslim who came into a con- to contact with the teachings of this deen and accepted this deen. As soon as you become serious about this deen, and you're serious about returning to your master, and really living like you're a slave, then you face a lot of problems. Your family gets in the way, your friends get in the way, your own old habits get in the way, your society gets in the way. Everything around you gets in the way. Maybe even the way you used to earn your money wasn't halal. So you have to lose your money too. Maybe you have to lose your business too. You definitely lose your friends. You always, you, you suffer, the, the relationships and family suffer. The marital relationship can suffer. The relationship with your kids or your parents can suffer. All these problems because you did what? Return to Allah. And all of these things are connected with being dissatisfied in life, aren't they? But when you are cut off from all of these things, and you return only to Allah, you find a tranquility you never found before. You know, I've, I've met brothers before whose life was all about partying. They would go to clubs and drugs. Everything that would, they would think would bring them pleasure in life, they tried. They tried it. They did it. And then Allah brought them to the deen. And they said, man, after you return to Allah, that is a high I've never felt. Now Allah says, now the human being will be informed. What did he make a priority out of? And what did he put on the back burner? That's the translation I'll prefer here. Bima qaddama. What did he give priority to? What took taqdeem for him? What was priority number one? What took precedence? وَمَا أَخَّرَ And what could wait? What were the things that you put on the back burner? The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't do a good deed. The human being says, it can wait. I can do it later. The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't leave sin. He says, I'll leave it later. Or, you know, let me do what I want right now. I'll do that later. I have time. Taqdeem and ta'khir, not the grammar one. The one for life. Human beings will be thoroughly informed. What were your priorities? What did you put ahead? What came first for you? What came later for you? Bima qaddama wa akhar. The other meaning of qaddama wa akhar in tafsir juz amma I mentioned also. Qaddama also means what you've sent forward. You've done deeds, you've done works, and every one of them are waiting for you. Our deeds are waiting for us. Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You've sent collateral over. You've sent deeds over for processing. And you're gonna meet those deeds on judgment day. I don't meet my deeds now, I just do them now. I will meet them then. Wa wajadu ma amilu hadura. Then you're standing face to face in front of their salahs. If your salat was lousy, you'll be standing in front of a lousy salat. Staring right at you. That's what it's gonna be. People were lying, cheating, backbiting, 
angry, arrogant, condescending, whatever you were, looking right at you in the face. And then you're going to say, Mali hadal al kitab. That's, that's the reality of it. Bima qaddama wa akhar. What did he make a priority out of? What did he put on the back burner? This is one of those life transforming ayat. The human being will be thoroughly informed. This was your priority. This is what you spent time on. This is what you did with your free time. This is what you thought can wait. You had all these dreams. I want to memorize the Quran. What did you do for it? How many seasons of how many TV shows did you watch instead? That was a priority for you. What do you wanted to memorize? Oh, but it can wait though. Inshallah, one day when my heart is purified, then I shall start. You know? بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَرَ بَلِ الْإِنسَانِ No, no. Yes, on that day the human being will be given thorough news, but it's not like the human being is blind now. Rather the case is that the human being عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Against his own self بَصِيرًا Is fully insightful. There is one person that knows so much about you and nobody else knows about you. And besides Allah, and that's you. You have an insight into who you are, what your flaws are, what your limitations are, what your capabilities are, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what opportunities you avail, what opportunities you get lazy about. You know that about yourself more than anybody else. And you and I decide to lie to ourselves. We just decide we're not going to have an honest conversation with ourselves, about ourselves, and about ourselves with Allah. We don't want to have that honest conversation. For some people, all they want at the end of their life, what is success to them? Maybe I'll own a house. That's success for them. Maybe if I have this much money, that means I have success. Maybe if I got married to this one or that one, maybe that's, that means I have success. But I go back to what I started with. There are some people who are happy with doing just the minimum. Just the minimum. But I am here to tell you the young people in the audience today. Allah has blessed you and I am telling you He expects great things from you. He does not expect the minimum from you. There are so many Muslims, the only thing left of Islam is their name. That's the only thing left. They don't care about Salat, they don't care about Halal and Haram. They're far from this deen. What can I do to further this deen? What can I do to... I shouldn't just be happy that so many people come and attend Jumu'ah. Does that mean everybody's heart is clean? Does that mean that we, are enough, we don't need any more reminder? Is that what that means? Or are there evils in our society? Are there youth that are turning towards drugs? Are there young people that are just living their life for no purpose? All they do is play video games and watch movies and go to sleep. And the, if you ask them for a purpose, they say, I want to graduate and get a job. Is that a goal? Get a job? Allah gave us such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. But you know what? We are living in strange times. The people who need the da'wah the most today are the Muslims themselves. But even if you get a good job, but you don't do your job, you got the job, but you show up late every day. You got the job, but you don't finish any projects. You're sitting there at the desk wasting your time. You're gonna lose that job. Somebody else will come and do it for you. You will not keep that job even if you qualified. Qualifications are not enough. You have to do the work. Allah Azza wa Jal is keep giving all of us. He's already qualified us. We are people of La ilaha illallah. We are already qualified. But that doesn't mean we're doing the work. If we don't do the work, if we don't make, we don't concern ourselves, if we don't care, then you know what's going to happen. In tatawallu yastabdil qawman ghayrakum, thumma la yakunu amthalakum. You turn away, and Allah will replace you with a nation other than yourselves, and they will not be like you. They will not be lazy like you. And those are when, Mus when young Muslim people have real iman. When young Muslims have real strength in their belief, then they, can, they have the power to change the world. They have the power to make the world a, a better place. But when young Muslim people don't have real iman, they don't have real conviction, then they are a waste of space. They are a waste of society, a waste of a generation. The only thing in their life, the, only, the biggest, the, the most important thing in their life is when is the next movie coming out? The most important thing is when is the next iPhone coming out? The next most important thing is, man, I wish I had that car. That's it. 
Your life doesn't go any further than that. My teacher used to say that Islam is similar to climbing a mountain. You know, when you're climbing a mountain, you throw a hook and you climb. If you throw a hook not very high, then you will only reach that much. You can't reach any further. If your goal is money, if your goal is a six pack, if your goal is a car, if your goal is a promotion, if your goal is entertainment, if your goal is girls, whatever your goal is, then you're only gonna get that, you won't get anything else. But if your goal is something higher, to serve something more than yourself, you don't live a selfish life. You wanna live for the sake of Allah and for the benefit of others. That's how you want to live then you will benefit yourself definitely, but you will be honored in the eyes of Allah because you set your goal much higher. Our deen in this beautiful ayah, Allah Azza wa describes it, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my path. A sabil is a path. And you know what? Allah did not say in this ayah, قُلْ هَذَا دِينِي This is my deen. Tell them this is my religion. This is my Islam. This is my truth. This is my book. He didn't describe it with any other language except this is my path. And all of you know a path is like a journey. So Islam itself, Islam itself is being described as a journey in this ayah. What does that mean? That means you have, in any journey you have to make progress, right? So even if you take one step, you are more closer to your destination than the day before or the step before. Every single moment you are making progress in a journey. And in this ayah, Allah's Messenger says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this religion of mine and this religion of yours and ours, Islam is a journey, which means I am supposed to do something more for this deen than I did yesterday. And I'm supposed to do more tomorrow and more tomorrow and more tomorrow. I'm supposed to go further.